Good evening. Your room set up is way cuter. What's that? And your room set up is way cuter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Tribe. Uh, Chelsea here with Tribe RN. I've got Ashley with me here. We're going to talk about writing a resume well and interviewing well as well. So thank you for joining us, Ashley. Thank you. So you are part of management, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, I'm great. a assistant nurse manager. Awesome. So Ashley offered to share her expertise with us. I think one of your, her employees actually tagged her and was like, Ashley would be great at this. Is that how that happened? Yep. Okay. So I'm thankful that you chose to be with us today. We had tons of questions come through, through from the tribe, lots of interest. So we'll just get started. We typically make these short and sweet, try not to go over 30 minutes. So hopefully we can get it all in. Guys, while you're watching, please feel free to ask questions um, as you see fit. So someone asked on our resume, how do we sell ourselves well? Uh, <clears throat> you definitely want to speak to your strengths and whether you're a new nurse or an experienced nurse or even if there are um, techs or non-healthcare background um, applicants, you always just want to speak to your strengths and know what the strengths would be for whatever you're applying for. So like with nursing, you want to be honest, trustworthy, dependable, reliable, flexible, and just, you know, fine tune what your strengths are to speak to whatever position you're applying for. Um, and just be, you know, be honest. Um, a lot of formality comes through in in your resume. Sorry, one of my kids trying to break in. Oh, that's okay. No, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. I have a two-year-old, so he does his own thing. You're fine. Um, you can be on the interview. It's really fine. <laughs> he will probably join. Um, but yeah, it's you just fine. really want to, um, you know, speak to your attributes and just paint a paint a picture of what would make you a, a good candidate for whatever uh, program or position you're applying for. Okay. Uh, how important is wording on a resume? What are some key words to use and what are things to avoid putting on a resume? So wording is very, very important. First and foremost, spell check. That will be your biggest downfall if you have grammatical errors in your resume. Likely, when I am reading a resume, when I see the first error, I'm like, okay, that's one. If I see two, I, I close the resume and I don't even... Uh, continue reading. So that would be the most important. <clears throat> and then also picking the keywords, again, the the words that are related to the position that you're applying for. Um, don't be too wordy because that's another, uh, another setback that can happen is if you have a resume that's too wordy, if it's too many pages, it still might not be read. So keep it concise and find the words that are specific to whatever you're applying for. So if you are uh, applying to an OR position, you want to think about what is specific to the OR and hit some words that are, are unique to that unit. Okay. For these newer nurses, they don't know what's unique to that unit. They don't know what those trigger words might be. Can you give some examples? Yeah, um, so <clears throat> nursing in general, I'd say you could probably um, use uh, words like teamwork. That's a big one because um, mm -hmm. that's across the board. Teamwork in nursing is huge. Um, reliability. Um, you know, we we work shift work, and we want our our staff to be committed to the the time that they're working so we need them to be reliable um honest patients mm -hmm. and their families want you to be honest they never want anyone to beat around the bush they don't want to have anything sugar-coated they want you to talk to them like they're a person so honesty is a big one mm -hmm. i think another Sorry. and you could you could look at is whenever <laughs> so that's that's my crazy crazy boy um, whenever, whenever you are applying to a specific position, you can always go on the website 
and look at their values, look at their, um, you know, their uh, mission statement and look at some of those keywords because a lot of what is stated in a uh, company's values will actually give you some of the keywords that you can target in your resume. How long would you say we should keep the resume under one page, two pages? What would you classify as too long? Um, I think anything over two pages. Um, you know, one page is nice and short and sweet, but people with a lot of experience, it's hard to stick to that one page. But keep it to two pages, and I'd say <laughs> he's crazy. Don't hesitate to say references available upon request because adding your references will only add to the length of it and it's not necessarily needed directly in the resume. Okay, good point. Okay, I didn't realize that. So how should previous non-nursing experience be written on a student nurse resume? So whether, you know, we have some nurses that apply that don't have any work experience. They've been a stay-at-home mom for the last however many years, or granted, that's a full-time job. Um, you know, yeah. anything that we can pull experience and knowledge from, again, you know, use those, those keywords. I highly recommend looking at the company's values and then form your response to to those specific subjects. So for instance, um, you know, like collaboration is a, a big part of nursing and a lot of companies have it as it incorporated in their values or their mission statement. And so you can, you can gather um, experience of collaboration from just about any job that you hold, you know, um, you collaborate as a server, you work with the buster, the hostess, uh, the manager, right. your customers. Um, so really just, um, you know, focus on those those important factors and then just build your experience around what is important for the position that you're applying for. Okay. Those of you that are tuning in, go ahead and ask questions if you have questions come up, okay? Um, let's see, what are some trigger words to use? And I think you already... Um, expanded upon the trigger words or language, but what about uh, anything to exclude that you would absolutely uh, recommend not mentioning on your resume? Yes, don't add anything negative. Um, don't speak negatively about any previous experience with employees or employers. Um, you know, keep, keep it light, keep it positive. Um, as soon as you take a negative turn, it will probably go in the delete file. Um, so I'd say that's probably the biggest one. Um, and then, you know, don't add anything that you don't directly have experience with. Um, if you're looking to gain experience in something, that's more something to put in the cover letter. Don't, don't add it into the actual body of the resume is like, I'm seeking this, um, hoping to gain expertise in this. Um, we we know that's why you're applying to the job, but um, just keep it to the the specific experience that you have. Okay, that is another question. What should be included on my cover letter? Uh, yes, your your goal um, for whatever position you're applying for. Um, you know whether. It's multi-tiered. Some people are applying to residency programs, and of course, you want to expand on like you're you're hoping to gain a uh, greater knowledge set and experience and increase your education base. Um, if it's for labor and delivery, um, you can put there you're hoping to gain experience in um, you know the transition of uh, you know someone becoming a mom. Um, you want to make it um, whatever your your uh, your prospect is. You can state it there. Um, you can touch on some of your highlights and say, "I qualify for," or "I believe I qualify for this position that I'm seeking because I have X, Y, Z um, in my background." And okay. uh, make it again, make it short and to the sweet, no more than a paragraph, I'd say. 
Okay, so keep your cover letter to a paragraph. Good pointers. Okay, and uh, uh, the contact information. I called a couple of people today to set up an interview, and they didn't accept restricted numbers. So make sure you put contact information you can actually be contacted at. Oh, good idea. Okay, yes, good call. So maybe an alternative phone number if your phone number is not set up to re yes. take restricted yes. calls. Okay. Mm -hmm. Deal. Um, that's all the resume based questions that came through. We'll move on to interview based. So what are some good questions to ask? And then they elaborated. I would think benefits, programs, residency opportunities, CE opportunities and advanced opportunities. And I think those were just some ideas that she was throwing out. But you have any specific things that you should ask in an interview. I think those are all really good subjects. Um, you know, our our jobs are very personal to us, and um, you know, people are are seeking specific positions because it's going to give them benefit in some way. So, definitely asking about <clears throat> um, like what the benefits are if there's uh, um, what's the word a probationary period. Um, you know what the what the shift is. Um, do you know whether or not you're applying to a day or a night shift? What the hours are? Are they three twelves? Are they four tens? Um, that would be a good time to ask. Um, mm -hmm. I think another uh, definitely like education wise, because in nursing you're always going to be learning until the yeah. day you retire and beyond. Um, ask any education related questions. Ask about if there's any opportunity for CE support. A lot of facilities are offering um, free CEs, a lot of free online access to CEs. Um, uh, you know, another thing is show interest in the company you're applying for. So it's important that you do your research. Um, you know, I, I've said a couple times ask about the values or speak to the values. No, um, know what that company is about and then ask about the goals of the company ask you know what direction do you see the company in what's the company's five-year plan what's the company's long-term plan because um, you know all companies are looking to grow and you want to figure out if you fit into that um, that plan um, what about asking about their employee retention as a unit is that acceptable yes and I think that's actually a very good question um, that shows that you are interested in staying in the position because we don't want to hire just to have you find a new job a couple months down the road. Um, so yeah. I think that's absolutely appropriate for the interview. All right. And then asking also um, whoever you're interviewing with, whether that's peers or management, what they love most about the unit. Yep, I think that's another good question and another good opportunity to keep it positive. Um, ask them about what they like, don't ask them about what they dislike. But good point. That happens. Um, but yeah, ask them ask them what their you know their top three things about working there. Um, you can make it specific to management. You can ask in a peer interview. Feel sorry. Hold on. This is. Sometimes this happens. We have lunch and we have volunteers giving us their time to chat with us. Yes, and don't if if something weird comes up in an interview, don't feel bad about it either because we're all people. Right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how many times I've had like a coughing fit in the middle of trying to ask somebody a question. Um, yeah. So I'm sorry. Can you refresh my memory? What we were talking about? Yes, we were talking about you uh, mentioned top three things um, specific to management or in a peer interview, and then you. Oh on. yes, yeah. Sorry, my son got stuck. Um, you you can definitely ask it to peers specific to management because you know there's a saying that says people quit their manager um, when they're looking for a new job, and so that's that's very important. You want to know that. If someone can answer quickly what their favorite thing about their manager is, then likely that that manager is uh, pretty engaged with their staff. So I think it it's very fair to ask what their favorite thing is. 
um, ask them what their favorite thing about their patient population, um, their favorite thing about their team, the organization. I think those are all good questions. But stay away from what are your dislikes, right? Yeah, yeah, don't, don't ask, well, uh, what would make you wanna quit your job? Yeah, good. Let's see, um, specific tips on behavioral interviewing. Do you guys do behavioral interviewing at your institution? We do, yeah. Okay, and so um, go ahead. Oh, no, it's okay, go ahead. Oh, I think she was just wanting specific tips on answering those questions appropriately. Oh, okay. Um, you know, if you actually Google behavioral interview questions for nursing, there is an absolute abundance of specific questions. Um, I know the questions we ask are easy to find on Google, and a lot of them are the very same across institutions. Um, I've worked for two major hospitals in in my area, and the, the set of interview questions were almost the same. Um, so okay. Google ahead of time and then practice your responses. Um, you know, use, use your sibling, use your kids, use your spouse, um, you know, practice with somebody. Um, yeah. And they'll, they'll probably key you in on some things, little quirks that you might be doing that you're not even aware of, especially you're most comfortable at home with the people you know. And so if they're noticing the things that might raise a red flag, they're they're gonna let you know and it's in a more relaxed setting so i think it's good to practice um always so a lot of behavioral questions will have a two-tiered um ask so it'll ask uh if if you were in this position like say one of the questions we ask is um we all know that nursing is a stressful uh, field to work in. Tell me about a time that you were stressed out and everything was going wrong and you didn't know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. Don't take it negative. That That is the biggest way to have whoever's interviewing you shut down and, and essentially stop listening. Um, think of a positive experience and it's okay we get stressed out. That's part of learning and growing. Um, but talk about an experience that had a positive outcome. Like I had the craziest day. I we were short staffed. I had to take extra patients. Not that that ever happens in nursing. Um, no. no, never. Um, <laughs> but you know, turn turn it into a positive and say like, well, the team really came together and everybody supported each other and we got the job done. The patients were well taken care of and happy and we all got out on time and we didn't have to stay late and chart. Okay, good points. Okay, good. Um, Molly says, my mom was in the middle of an interview, she's a manager, had to leave immediately because she got a call from EMS. I was on the way to the hospital with a broken leg. Uh, side note, I think her point was, yes, life happens, just go with it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, okay. we've been in the same position. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jeanette asked, let's see, just able to join. Sorry if this was a repeat. I left my healthcare admin job to be a stay at home mom. Sorry, it's hiding half her comment uh, for 10 years. I went back to school, just graduated. Any tips for the employment gap? Yeah, that's a great question. Stay at home moms have excellent experience to draw from and don't hesitate to talk about that being your experience. It is a job. You have to learn how to balance schedules and time management. And even though you you may have been, you know one or five, however many kids you have at home, those are essentially like your patients. You have to make sure they're clean, dry, fed. Um, you know that that really is experience. So don't hesitate to draw from that. Um, you know there's a lot to be said in being able to pull what you you have been doing, whether you're a stay-at-home mom or you're an engineer, um, you can always turn it so it is appealing. Awesome, that's great input. 
because I know there's several stay at moms that are here in our group who are specifically wanting to come back into the field. And I think they feel disqualified. And I love to hear you say that, you know, their time at home was well spent and that's mm -hmm. okay. You know, I love that. Yeah. My so, manager was actually a stay at home mom before she went into nursing. So it's, it's not a barrier. Um, just, you know, speak to your strengths and, and talk about the experience you've had because there's plenty to, to come out of it. Yeah, great. So what are some answers interviewers want to hear to basic questions like strengths and weaknesses? Um, <clears throat> you know, strengths, I think um, they're very broad nursing subjects. Um, time management is a big one. Um, working well independently and as a member of a team is a good one. Um, you don't, don't oversell yourself. You don't want to come off as arrogant. Um, you know, nobody is the best nurse in the world. Um, you, you can speak in a, a way that it sheds light on who you are as a person without going too overboard. So keep mm -hmm. it honest and um, again, you know, focus your strengths on what would be desirable for the position that you're applying for. Um, weaknesses, everybody has one. Um, even mm -hmm. if you have had a stellar career and you feel like you're at an all time high in your career, there's always something that you can improve on. Um, so I know one that I would say, sorry, it's coming back. One that I would say is, um, you know, I have a hard time saying no. So I take on a lot of extra work um, because I don't like to say no and I like to be supportive of my team. It can be considered a negative because at some point you have to tell people no and that's okay. And it's an area of opportunity for people. Um, you know, you can say you don't, Sorry. I think we just lost Ashley. She'll be back. All she has to do is re-click the link. So no worries. Um, just one second, guys. She will... It may take her a second, but bear with us. Guys, so if you are just now tuning in, um, just be aware that the lots of questions have come in beforehand. So go ahead and listen from the beginning if you have a chance. Um, I, I'm just responding to her. Um, she says her son pulled the cord out. So no big deal. This is life. This is life with the family. And most of us have something at home to go home to, whether that's your pets, whether that's a house to be cleaned, whatever it is, we have something at home waiting for us. And so um, don't feel like your manager who, or whoever's interviewing you thinks that you don't have life outside of work. We all know and we appreciate that you have life outside of work. So just make sure that you're aware um, that your strengths at home or wherever outside of work is, that you sell yourself on those. You have stuff to bring to the table no matter what it is. Um, Bianca, we'll get your question answered as soon as Ashley is able to come back. She's, she's on her way back. Here she is. All right. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. No problem. My okay. Husband. Welcome back. Well, my oh, husband's oh, going to oh, get an earful oh, for not uh... Okay. We're echoing a ton. Can you turn your the other one? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Mommy, Mom. So Bianca asked, um, I'm a last semester in nursing school. Any tips specific for new grads? I think she turned in so um, you can add anything specific that you have to add for her. Um, you know, focus on NCLEX. <laughs> That's super important. Um, you know, the the jobs you can start looking, but I, I would say don't don't spend too much time because if you get overwhelmed by trying to find a job and doing research for that and you're not devoting your time to passing your boards then you'll be at a standstill so make sure you uh, devote enough time to pass the NCLEX. sorry again you're fine 
stopped. Um, another super important thing is um, give some time for yourself. You just went through nursing school, so you need to either schedule a massage or do something for yourself, take a little trip, spend time with your family, um, you know, recoup some of the relationships that maybe you had to take a little time out for while you were in nursing school. And that way when you are entering the job market, you're fully refreshed and you feel like you know, you didn't, you didn't go too fast and you missed that time and then you go straight from nursing school to now you are working full time. So make sure you, you know, take some time for yourself and have that mental reset. Um, and then when you do start applying, make sure you're doing your research about, you guys, sorry, go, go. Um, do your research about whatever position you're applying for if you can drill down on the website and look at the like, unit specifics um a lot of the the facilities whether it's a hospital or uh skilled nursing a lot of the facilities have kind of a breakdown where you can click a link and go to a page specific to the unit you're applying for um, if that okay. is possible i highly recommend doing that so you can see like unit-based initiatives like I'm on an orthopedic floor, so um, we have specific targets to our orthopedic patients. Um, if nothing else, always, always, always look at the mission statement and the values of the company, because that's what we mold all of our processes and everything around, making sure we're, uh, you know, meeting our our mission and our values to be the best support for our patients. Absolutely. And then, so let me go back to what you were saying about um, devoting time to NCLEX. So when I was a brand new nurse, um, I was a CNA before. And so I hired in directly from my CNA position to a GN position. In your personal experience as a manager, would you prefer someone stay in a CNA role and pass their boards or whatever role, a waitress role, whatever it is that you're doing during nursing school? Um Whatever that role is, focus, stay focused on that, pass your boards, and, and then apply for jobs. Is that your, your preference? I think that, uh, you know, at least wait until you're closer to when it's time for your boards because we have that little sitting period before we can actually um, physically sit and take our, our test. Um, so I, I would I'd recommend waiting until you're a little bit closer. Um, you know, in the hospital setting for nursing, it's less and less common that we're utilizing LPNs and you have to have your RN in order to work on an inpatient unit. So um, you, you have to be able to have that RN designation behind your name. So um, I think it's important to devote the majority of your time to passing boards or focusing on the current position that you're in. If you're wanting to stay internal, um, you know, go out with a bang. If you're a CNA and you want a job as a nurse, you know, prove, prove that you're up to the challenge of making the transition and that no matter what role you're in, you're going to provide the best care for your patient. Um, I do sure. recommend taking at least a little bit of time off. Um, you know, the the week of NCLEX, um, if you can if you can manage it, you know, take two weeks off and take a little trip after or have a staycation. Um, take a little time where you're not really doing a whole lot of anything right after boards either. Um, but then, you know, either just before you uh, sit to take your boards um, and immediately following. I think that's the best time where you can really devote yourself to building a solid resume. It feels good when you can add that RN license to your resume and then you are fully committed to whatever you're seeking. Okay, a couple of questions have come in from viewers. Jeanette says, uh, I understand nursing residency programs would be full-time. I'm just interested in part-time work. Any thoughts? Um, 
I don't know of any residency programs that are part-time and they do mm -hmm. have, it, it's not even um, like for full-time nursing, typically you work 312s. It's a full 40 hour a week commitment. Um, right. I, right. Yeah, you really have to be committed to that time frame. And some residencies are longer than others. So I don't let that, that full time or part time designation like completely deter you because a lot of residency programs, like we have several that are 16 weeks. And so you, you could get through that 16 weeks and then maybe be considered for something after. But what's really important to consider is a lot of the uh, stipulations of a residency program is that you commit to uh, typically a minimum of one year of full-time employment. Hmm. So do you know of any part-time employment straight out of nursing school? I, I haven't heard of any myself. I'm sure that there is some. Do you know of some? Um, I don't. Um, I, I wouldn't say that they're not out there. Um, I do know that even if you do hire into a part-time position, likely to get through the orientation period, it's going to be a full-time commitment um, just because they want to ensure you get the, you know, the full amount of training and you're sufficient in your skills and knowledge and, and everything before you come off of orientation. So I, I don't know of any, I haven't come across any in any of my experience, but that's not to say they're not out there. Viewers, if you're watching and you know of something that is part-time, go ahead and stick it in the comments. Um, educate us. Um, okay, so we had one other question come in from Taylor. What about new grads who can't afford to wait financially? New grads that can't afford to wait financially, like as far as apply? I think she's saying, um, instead of waiting until she's already taken her boards, uh, what what if she can't afford to do that? Um, you know, if, if you can, you do a, a CNA position, um, even while you're waiting, even if it's PRN, PRN nights are, uh, you know, fairly substantial as far as income from differentials and mm -hmm. um, it just kind of puts you in a different bracket. Um, you know, do, if you have to get going right away, try and get into a position that will help gear you towards the end goal of getting a position as a nurse. Um, I know within our own team, if we have a tech, even if we know we've hired several that they're just waiting to get their testing date. Um, you know, they can start as a PRN tech on the floor and get some experience, get some hands-on time with, uh, you know, doing patient care and get your, get your hands wet. Um, I think that's what I would recommend just because it, it already is leaning into the field that you're going into. Um, it, if you work outside of the healthcare system, that's wonderful too. Some of our best nurses came straight from bartending. Um, so, you know, do whatever you have to do financially to stay afloat. But if you can get into a healthcare position, that would probably be recommended. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll just speak from my personal experience. I was a CNA all through nursing school. And then I got hired on, I was with, working with an agency. I got hired on as a GN. Is that even a thing anymore? Do they hire graduate nurses still? Yeah, um, a, lot of, okay. a lot of the positions aren't labeled specifically as a graduate nurse. However, there are some places, like I know one of our skilled nursing facilities here in town is actually developing a grad nurse program. Um, but you can look for either a nurse intern or nurse extern position. Um, some Hi. of those hire in like the last semester of school. And then the condition of employment is that you pass your boards, um, but they mm -hmm. will hire you on. You don't get to do the full scope of nursing until you have right. the RN. But um, like I know our, our ED at my hospital actually has a, a nurse intern program and they hire people directly through that. New nurse. Yeah, that's yeah, intern and externships, one, and I don't remember which, I think intern is after graduation and extern is prior to graduation, or do I have those flipped? No, it's right. It seems backwards. <laughs> okay. So um, anyways, intern and extern positions are great. Um, Tanya says, 
I have my LPN uh, before my, oh, I'll have my LPN before my RN. Okay, so you're just, you're in the same situation. You're still going to be graduating and then waiting to take your boards. Mm -hmm. um, but you can still work as a CNA like she's talking about or an ex internship or an externship would be a great mm -hmm. option too. Any yeah. other questions before we let Ashley go? Anything you wanted to say, Ashley? Sorry. No, I think um, it's exciting that people have asked such really awesome questions. And, uh, you know, I think those people are already headed in the right direction towards getting, uh, uh, you know, substantial employment, something that they want to do because they're asking the right questions. Um, you know, in, in the interview process and then into nursing, um, you know, I think it's a huge attribute when people continue asking questions because, we're always learning and it's super important to keep on with that thought process. So I commend everybody that that joined and were willing to participate. Absolutely. Um, there are professional resume writers. I've learned this um, since we posted this about uh, learning more about resumes and interviewing. So I will, in the comments of this q and I will put some information about a professional resume writer. You can contact her. You do pay money. Um, and maybe this isn't an area where you need to pay that kind of money. It's like $400 for some. Um, but I will put that information in the Q&A as well. And then um, I was going to add one more thing. Oh, it's escaped me. Anyways, look in the comments, the Q&A, um, the comments here, and I will add in some more information. Thank you for giving us your time, Ashley. And to those of you that attended, thank you. And um, put questions if you have other questions that come through. Have a great night, guys. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Yeah, thank you so much, Ashley.